Well, of course, uh, one thing that uh, one can't say enough about, of course, is Her Majesty's uh, extremely um, gifted sense of humour. Uh, I remember once at a state dinner, the soup spoons were uh, two millimetres to the left of where they should be when receiving Commonwealth states of head. And Her Majesty at first was uh, a bit put off about this ill-timed faux pas from the serving staff, but she soon responded with the plum uh, to this socio-metrical dilemma with her effervescent humour when she said, one mustn't live one's life as if one was a ruler. <laughs> it just sort of gives you a taste of sort of the, the rapier wit that was uh, on display in Buckingham Palace and Windsor Palace and all those other castles over the years. No, no, no. Many, in fact, say that she was the uh, the second Lenny Bruce, but I I disagree with that. I say, in fact, that she was the first Lenny Bruce. Even though Lenny Bruce was the first to have that name, she's the queen and she gets everything first. So she was Elizabeth the second and Lenny Bruce the first, and Lenny Bruce was Lenny Bruce the second, but he was not. Queen Elizabeth I, that was another lady from our time-honoured history, the first in the line of the Elizabethans. Um, good question, yes. Um, how do you become a royal correspondent? Um, talk to Jim. Talk to my friend Jim. And he'll... Yeah, talk to him because he knows people. Yeah, he knows me. Yeah, so talk to him and he'll tell you to come back to me and ask me how you can become a royal correspondent. Well, we could talk now, but I prefer if you go to Jim and then come back and tell me that Jim referred you to me. So go talk to Jim. He's over there. Uh, once again, if you're just joining us, Her Majesty the Queen has become a black ribbon. Uh, did you talk to Jim? Ah, good. Yes. So you want to become a royal correspondent. Well, off you go, Sonny. Uh, sorry, that's my first time. I'm a bit nervous here, but uh, let's see if I can give this a go. Um, Her Majesty the Queen has passed away, but... Um, she will not be forgotten by the many world leaders that she met over the years. Uh, you can see her now standing alongside the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny, important world leaders still with us today. Her Majesty, fiction, fact, all together, working to keep us Britain non-slaves. Non-slaves, not us Britons, no. No, for God and country and good old King Rugby Dump. We'll be back with more on the amazing coverage on Radio 1. I remember one time, I'll never forget it, she, she looked right at me. Right at me. She looked right at me and I was looking right at her. She looked right at me. I will never wash my face again after that day. She looked right at me through the uh, television screen. And I, and I got this feeling that I never got from any other celebrity who looked at me through a TV screen. I always feel like when a, when a celebrity's looking at me through, through a telly screen, he just fucking hates me guts, like fucking uh, George Clooney. I always feel that fucking wake has got it out for me. David Mitchell, I feel like I'll just fucking be little eyes at like the front of fucking... They want to kill me. With her, I never felt that. I never felt that she hated me. I didn't feel that she loved me. I didn't feel that she even knew who the fuck I was. It was just this... There was something very neutral about her that kept me paying my taxes and still does to this day. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you've got to pay the tax. I'm not paying the fucking energy companies. I mean, it's cost of living crisis. I'm not going to pay the energy companies. But my taxes, yeah, I've got to pay my taxes. I've got to pay taxes. Oh, you've got to, I mean, you've got to, well, you've got to have a state funeral. You, you can't just put them in the back of a fucking uh, ice truck. Just a fucking queen. I'll never forget that day. She looked at me through that TV screen and she said, I don't give a fuck. That's what she said with that look. Not hate, not love, just I don't give a fuck. That, that, are, that, that is important, and that is, that is why this is the freest country in the nation of the world, except for America. That's pretty fucking good, isn't it? I mean, America, with the guns and all, we're close. We're second. It's a close race. I'll never forget that day. But like I say, I mean, I, I felt with her, like I, I could watch her on the telly, and I never felt that she would, you know, blow me up. I don't feel that when I see Richard, what's his, the guy from IT crowd. Every time that fucker does a bank advert, I know he's fucking got it out for me and I don't know what the fuck I ever did to him. Not with Her Majesty, not with William, not with Kate. I feel they look at me and they're like, let him live. Let him live. Well, the great thing about being an Irish person uh, and being invited to come on the television at a time like this, 
and being a proud Irish person as I am is that I don't have to like the rest of your bullshit. I can tell a little bit of truth on the program and tell you what I think about your so-called fucking monarchy. And it, what did you wave at that before? What is this? I'll say what I want to say. I was putting on an accent before I came in the studio. Because honest to God, do you think you'd fucking let me on the program if you fucking knew I had an accent like this at a time like this? I'll have my two cents. Everybody loved her. Everybody in the entire world loved her. They absolutely loved her. I don't think you'd meet a person in the world who didn't love her. Everybody loved her. There's not a single person in the world who didn't love her. I know a, a person who is a sociopath. Clinically diagnosed sociopath. Just like Edmund Kemper and Jeffrey Dahmer, a, a, an actual serial killing sociopath. He loved her. Even he loved her. Satan loved her. They all loved her. Everybody loved her. She's like Raymond. Everybody loved him. But not as much as they loved her. Everybody loved her. Don't you understand it? Okay, um, let's go over to our chopper live now at Buckingham Palace. I love the smell of the napalm in the morning. Oh, sorry, um, we're flying over the, uh, the, uh, the, the Buckingham Palace now. You'll see the, uh, the, an inordinate amount of people gathered down below to pay their respects to the statues and the stones. Uh, lots of mud puddles. Uh, a little girl is leaving a chocolate tricycle out in front. Uh, many people are tweeting right now saying, My thumb hurts. I've been tweeting so much, my thumbs are hurting. God bless her thumb. My thumbs hurt. There's gifts. Many people are playing violins. It looks like we have a dulcimer down there as well. I've not seen one of those in a while. Um, and if we could fly over the back, the horse guards are doing their parade. There's a man dressed like a caveman. Ringo Starr is there. Uh, and there are two buckets of butter. What's that for? Uh, let's go back to you live in the studio, James and Jenkins. The reason that I write in today's column, all history stops from this point forward, is because all history was contained within this one solitary, lonely individual. Within the folds of her numerous wrinkles were contained the Magna Carta, the United States Declaration of Independence, the Rosetta Stone, and much sundry otherwise. So she literally was the receptacle for all history. So I think it's very insulting at a time like this to suggest that there will be a tomorrow, to suggest that there is a need to remember the past. She is the ohm. We all rub our bellies. We are the Bodhisattva. Oh, well, I suppose as an American, it's uh, kind of uh, an interesting time. Uh, uh, we're out here as tourists. Uh, and uh, boy, what a heck of a time to, to come out, huh? Uh, well, in America, you know, we don't uh, have a, kind of a king or a queen. We got our presidents. Uh, and uh, if we don't like one of those, uh, hey, you know, four or eight years, the guy's out. You know, and uh, kind of different over here. Uh, yeah, we're just going to lollygag around, uh, maybe get some uh, peas and chips later, or maybe ride a horse and buggy or whatever you got here. Uh, I'm out here on business. Um, yep, business. I'm a psychoanalytical technical coordinator app design web person. And uh, always wanted to see what it's like in this place. And boy, I tell you, it's a sad time. But uh, yeah, I'm probably a lot more qualified people to talk about this subject than me. <laughs> Would you say that she was the glue that held the nation together? Um... Yes, I would say that. Actually, actually, I wish I had said that. That's very good, actually. You, you can say that. You can, because there's a delay on this. We can edit it in later. Oh, would, do you want me to say that? It's up to you. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, well, as long as it's not a harsh, it won't be... No, no, it'll be smooth. It'll look like you actually thought it. Hmm. Yeah, OK, well, in that case, I would say... Well, I would say that she was... How would I describe her? I would say that she was mm, like the glue that held us all together. Sticky. Hot sticky. 
Are you a nation looking for a glue to hold you together? Why not get yourself a queen? Mm. We here in France are very saddened to hear the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. As you know, in France, we do not have a monarchy. We have not had a king since the last king we had with chopped off his head. Oh, nothing, you know, knock on wood for you, my friends, across the channel. But in this dark, sad time, we wish you all the very best in this grieving process. Now, of course, the first Charles, as we all know, was beheaded. The second Charles was characterized as Satan in Milton's Paradise Lost. So we see that the third Charles is going to have quite a hefty road to draw ahead of him. But I'm sure he's made of the same substance, the same mercurial elements, of which his mother was built. I am sure these dark times is going to be a way forward to the nation, and we will find our way out of the black ribbon times and into the multicolored ribbon times once again. We return with more on the passing of the new world we're in, man. It's a totally new world, man, and it's free of charge. It's called time, man. Everybody's got it. Well, um, growing up where I grew up, um, we didn't really have the Queen over, you know. So a lot of what we knew about the Queen, we had to make up ourselves, you know, sitting around the dinner table, you know, we'd all pretend we were the Queen and the King and the Princess and all that, you know, and what, what were they thinking and what do they do? And if, if the Queen, the real Queen, was anything like the Queen that my mum pretended to be, I should say my mum, because I'm trying to be a British person in this character, mum. Uh, my mum used to pretend to be the Queen, and in her version, whenever anybody would get down, or sick, or ill, she would always pick us up with a bit of laughter. And um, we heard that the Queen had a funny pair of shoes. Like, um, do you know them little cherry teeth that you wind up, the wind up cherry teeth? On each toe of each shoe, there was one of those, and they was really weird coloured shoes as well and all. And um, she used to put them on whenever any one of us was feeling down or blue or sad, and she put them on and, and make us laugh. And I know them, I've never worn them, but I know this must have been terribly uncomfortable. And I can imagine the, the real queen, if she was like the queen that my mum pretended to be, doing something like that, that would be a life of service lifting people's spirits up, giving hope and, and all that, and willing to go on to face the next day. I, I, did you know she wasn't really black and white? I, I didn't know that. Well, if you come back later, my wife will be in, and I'll have her show you all our thimbles we've collected over the years. We've got a lot of thimbles, rows and rows of thimbles of the Queen which is what we base most in our family. We both, both because we didn't have a, a telly for many years, never had a radio, but we had these thimbles of the royal family. And that's what we used to reconstruct our, shall I say, working class retelling of the royal family's life through those thimbles. So we might have got some facts wrong. Maybe the Queen didn't have funny pairs of shoes like I've described. Um... But, you know, you asked me to be on a programme. You didn't ask me to be on a programme. So why am I on the programme? I'm not on the programme. What? Do you mean I'm just in my flat? Cool, I've done gone mad again. Like the royals, I expect. <laughs> That's one thing we used to say. I bet they're all mad. They're all thimbles. Look at them. They're all thimbles, them. They must be mad. If I was a thimble, I'd be mad. But then again, I was out of, who is it, Schopenhauer? Schopenhauer, one of them get, get, they would say, well, if you were a thimble and all you knew you, your whole life was being a, a thimble, then you wouldn't be so having a hump about it, would you? Because you'd just be, uh, we'll return after this with more on uh, Her Majesty's You Know What. 
My name's Jack Grenford. I've uh, been an anti-monarchy activist for a long time, pretty much my whole life. Uh, pure, true, blue, Republican, uh, all the way. Uh, no kings, no queens. I've got a blog, I've got a podcast, I've got a vlog called Anti-Monarchy Now. Very anti-monarchy. Been preaching anti-monarchy here, been preaching anti-monarchy there, all the way anti-monarchy. But i just got to say, guys... Now's not the time. Just come on, keep it together. Just, just for a few months. Just now's not the time. Of course, I'm the real deal. But just chill out. Not now. You gotta, you gotta play this wise, man. Wise. Don't go off half cocked, man. Just cool your jets for a little bit. I mean, look, oh, I'm not a sellout. I'm not a sellout. I'm just saying. Take a chill pill for now. Play your cards right. And then you'll get the big compromise. Yeah? No need to have a react. What I would like to do today in this class is to send everybody home. Because I'm afraid I cannot teach today given the recent events in the news. Is there anyone in the class who does not want to go home early? Good. But first, I will ask you, student by student, how sad you feel today to ascertain if you're merely shining me on because you want to go home and play your, what do they call them now, video games? Jenkins, let's start with you. How do you feel today? Blue, sir. Right, blue, sir. How sad it is Queen Mum is past. Blue, sir. Blue. Go, Jenkins, go. Right sad lad you are. McMurphy. Oh, very torn up about it. Oh, boo hoo boo boo hoo boo It's the saddest thing I ever heard. I don't believe you, McMurphy. I'm going to have to ask you to stay here and be the headmaster of the school on your own. Now, everybody else, all the English kids, go home and rest and wear black tarpaulin all over your body. Yes, yeah. It's time for us to check out. We've had a lot of checking out over the past few years, haven't we? When life becomes too much, sometimes we must consign it over to the state. If it becomes too much of a responsibility, that's when it's the state's responsibility to care for the individual. So it is all to go home and have no more concern for how we're going to earn our livelihoods or how we're going to teach our children anything regarding anything having to do with consequential education. You're listening to Mike and Todd in the morning. Just got this from Across the Pond. The Queen of England has died. Let's take your calls. Mike in Oklahoma. Yeah, man, I just want to wonder what kind of, what are the woke people going to do about that? Good point. Let's go to Shirley in Vermont. Um, I don't see what this has to do with woke, anti-woke. Hey, man, Shirley, everything has everything to do with woke and anti-woke when you need to build an audience from scratch. And we're back with more coverage of the funeral of... Queen Queen Elizabeth, or the, the discussions of the funeral, which are not due to take uh, place for uh, a few days uh, now as the nation uh, molds. Of course, one of the very, very pressing concerns for many people across the world is how am I going to get to the funeral? Well, um, good news for you. Uh, if you are not able to attend the funeral, an American gentleman has volunteered to fly anybody in the world uh, to the Queen's funeral. Uh, let's go to America now. I will fly anybody in the world, wherever they are, to the Queen's funeral. If they give me a plane and I, I can take some flying lessons... And, and they give me enough money for, is it, it's petrol, right? They still take petrol or they climate solar things now. Airplane petrol. If, hey, if I got those three things, yeah, I'll pick you up. Tell me the place. I'll pick and we'll 
A and we'll, you know, get it down in Limeyville, right? Total spring break. Is it spring? What month is this, man? I mean, crazy. Anyway, catch some waves, you know, could be fun. Get a hold of me. My name's Skip Benford, dot, dot, nine, four, five, 12, Ocean Way. You know, the thing I really remember most about her is her attitude. God damn, that woman had some attitude in a good way. It was the kind of attitude that uh, you, you just couldn't put it in a bottle. You know, you, you can't do that. You can't put attitude. They, they pretend you can on those perfume commercials like, you know, oh, it can do all this and sassy, sassy. You know, they can't. You can't. And it was in her. It was pure attitude. She had it. That girl had it. God damn, she had it. I was her typist. I'm Pierre Pencil. I'm from uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Indiana. And uh, yeah, luck of the draw. I mean, I got out of school. I didn't know where I was going to go. When ad came up for a typist for the Queen of England, I said, okay. You know, and uh, oh, anything. She, she just loved letters, you know? No, I mean, like letters from the alphabet. She was particularly fond of G. And so she would just want me to just type G. Over, and it was the easiest goddamn money I ever made. But hey, they get to have their quirks, you know. I mean, hell, if it, if I was a rich man, oh gosh, what would I do? I might hire somebody to just say the word puppet 2,000 times a day. You know, what are you going to do with that much money? What would I do? If I had that much money, I would, I don't know. I'd have days where I just ate pancakes, you know? You know those days? Anyway, I just loved your attitude. Sassy, spunctious. Is that a word, spunctious? If, if, there, if, if there's such a thing as spunctious, that woman was it. God, she had panaz, she had pizzazz. And I think, what, I think what drove her over the edge, and I'm not the only one to say this, I think it's not easy to see yourself on stamps. It, it can't be. That is generally the realm of dead people. Imagine if George Washington would have seen himself on money in the land where I'm from, if George Washington would have seen himself on a coin or a dollar bill, it would have been like a doppelganger. He's like, I, I, I'm dead. Mr. Adams, Mr. Jefferson, I cannot be your president. I am dead, for I have seen my face on money today. I think it drove her insane. I, I, think, I, think, I think you see yourself on a stamp, you see yourself on coins, I, I feel alive. But my face is on money. My face is on stamps. Am I Amelia Earhart? If so, I'm dead. No, your majesty, you're the queen. But I'm on money. I'm on stamps. That's because you're special. How special can one person be? I'm on money. I'm on stamps. I'm on money. I'm on stamps. I never met the queen personally. Myself. But uh, we, our country was involved in the war uh, and she had the prime minister who helped uh, make the big deal of the war and energy and all this and uh, it was nice to have their brand name attached to us, our company. It's more of a company than a country at this point, I would say. But that's what this will be remembered for. When you say that she live a life of service, what do you mean when you say that? A life of service, what is that? I mean that Her Majesty devoted her life to service, that her life in fact was one that consisted solely of service. So you mean like she went out to crack babies or she helped uh, people who had leprosy or... No, 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 no. But there's many, many different ways to show service and Her Majesty showed innumerable ways of showing service and showing what it is to have a life of service. So you mean that she went uh, with a shovel in animal cages and scooped out the shit every day? No, 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 no. There's, again, as I say, there's many ways to show service. Well, I tell you what, why don't I pull my cock out and you can service me by sucking my cock? Get the fuck out of my third world television studio. You're so full of shit. Hey, you're watching Raul Enrico and this is The Revenge. La Vendetta. 
I'll tell you something funny speaking about the Queen's funeral and all that, because I know we want a little bit, little bit of levity here. I know a lot of people are down, down in the dumps and the gloomy. It's a great cloud of everybody. It's, it's, like, it's raining on somebody's parade. Picnic's getting all wet here. A little bit of sunshine here. Tell a little funny story here. Do, do you know that song we always, always sing? That song we always sing? That, that, that bit where, that bit where, every time I hear that song, I always hear, ever, ever, ever shall be slaves. And my mate the other day, he says, no, 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 listen to it. That's not what they're saying at all. They're saying, never, never, never shall be slaves. Well, so that completely changes the whole fucking meaning of the song, doesn't it? And it explains so much. Because all them years, I'm hearing, ever, ever, ever shall be slaves. And I said, oh, it makes, okay, yeah, it makes sense we've got a monarchy. Yeah, pay your taxes, pay the council tax. Yeah, it's all part of the big system, yeah. For, for king, king, king of country, it all makes sense now. Ever, ever, ever shall be saved. And what, what else do you expect? I sang it with gusto. I sang it with viv and verm. Made sense. But when he told me, it's never, never, never shall be slave. Well, what the fuck have I been doing all these years? Paying my fucking counter to Oh, yeah, the system's working for me, all right. Yeah, kick in, kick in. Send old fucking Andrew off to another fucking Epstein Island. Yeah, kick in, kick in. It's all for the greater good. Fucking hell. When I heard that, the difference between ever and never, I will never get over that. Or, 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 ever, or I'll ever get over it. Which fucking is that? Oh, I fucking flipped over that. Ever is in never, but never is not in never, is it? I, mean, I thought it was funny. What are y'all still crying for? Come on, the people die all the time. It was a funny story I told. It was a funny story I told. And the tributes are continuing to pour in from across the globe. Just a few seconds ago, we received this from the... Is he, is he the president or the, is the owner? The owner of China, Zhao Jinping, had this to say. No one knows what it's like to be the sad man, to be the bad man behind blue eyes. And the... Prime Minister or President of France, I can never tell the difference, reiterated his sorrow by saying this. The greatest liberal is happening to me. I finally found myself. I believe I can work in anyone's shadow and etc. 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 And in conclusion, from the heights of royalty to the depths of slavery. Se questo è un uomo. Voi che vivete sicuri nelle vostre tipi di case, voi che trovate tornando a sera il cibo caldo e visi amici, considerate se questo è un uomo che lavora nel fango, che non conosce pace, che lotta per mezzo pane, che muore per un sì o per un no. Considerate se questa è una donna, senza capelle e senza nome, senza più forza di ricordare, vuoti gli occhi e freddo il grembo, come una rana d'inverno. Meditate che questo è stato. Vi comando queste parole. Scolpitele nel vostro cuore, stando in casa, andando per via, coricandovi, alzandovi. Ripetele ai vostri figli o vi si sfaccia la casa, la malattia vi impedisca, e i vostri nati torcono il viso da voi. And uh, I wish you all a very uh, happy day. Uh, that's patreon.com stroke Will Franco. If you still remember, I've also got a, uh, doing my first live show in uh, oh God, uh, two and a half years. First live show in two and a half years at uh, Neath in Wales on uh, September 24. God bless each and every one of you. I wanted to make a nice round half an hour, so I've not done anything for quite some time. So I wonder if I can pan this out for 50 more seconds. That was from uh, uh, Primo Levi's Se Questo e un Uomo. A wonderful book there, and my Italian study is quite, uh, quite disturbing, quite, uh, quite disturbingly real. But uh, if I had 30 seconds to spread a positive message, I would say um, go out and get yourself some ice cream. 
Ice cream never did anybody wrong. No how, no where, no way, no how. Except for, I guess, diabetes people and other people with health conditions that preclude them from eating ice cream. But uh, I would advise uh, getting the uh, two-pound Asda d- 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 cookie dough. It's quite a treat there. And uh, that's what I'm going to dip into today uh, to help uh, seize the sizzling summer heat wave, sizzling sizzle out. God bless you and good night.